very much for the introduction. Um, taking over your things, we're doing robots, right? <laughs> so I'm trying to share my screen. Um, okay, should work, right? Uh, so yeah, uh, we're an RTO here at Lakeside Park, like the Science and Technology Park. Uh, but let me first introduce UNEM research as a whole uh, a little bit more. Um, so we heard already there are several RTOs or research organizations here in Austria. UNEM research is a, a long established uh, center, uh, primarily owned by the, the counties of uh, Styria, uh, now also Carinthia and also Burgenland. So it's actually located in Southeast Austria. And uh, with about 500 researchers um, working in up to seven institutes, uh, uh, we're right. We're still right now the second largest, but that might change uh, given the dynamic uh, uh, RTO landscape uh, here in Austria right now. Topic-wise, uh, we're very much linked to regional um, technologies uh, that are really uh, essential for getting the industrial ecosystem of Carinthia, of Styria or Burgenland uh, uh, going. Um, but we're clustered in like three topics. Uh, so, so like the Institute Digital uh, that focusing on ICT technologies, materials, uh, material science uh, and robotics actually clustered together to, to form uh, um, topics in information production uh, technologies, but we also have uh, institutes dealing with medical uh, uh, topics in health and core med. So it's re regenerative uh, uh, medicine or taking the bigger pictures as life and policies. So sustainability is a big uh, uh, um, point right now. Uh, but also society and, and also um, how do you develop uh, the um, RTO or scientific ecosystem within Austria and beyond. So robotics was actually funded uh, 2015, um, actually to, to cover the core technologies and also to expand south uh, and uh, to connect to this uh, uh, venue, I really have to say I'm not seeing my institute as just an Austrian institute. We're very much uh, also collaborating with companies in, in Slovenia, in Italy, uh, and also uh, Croatia. And actually I had uh, a couple of very genius uh, uh, junior researchers uh, from Croatia, for example, um, that worked at my lab uh, in the beginning uh, of uh, our operation. But what we are focusing on is applied research um, as an RTO, of course, uh, but we also take into account that in order to, to gain traction uh, with the research efforts that we're doing, uh, we tend to look into whether we actually while doing a research project, we are also qualifying our industrial partners, uh, especially if they're uh, small and medium companies, uh, uh, in order to really uh, bring these te new technologies into the market. And uh, we're doing testing because that's often the key of bringing the technologies really in the field. So in order to give you a short introduction of, of the Institute and what we're focusing on, uh, we already heard the term AI uh, quite a lot. Uh, we're dealing with industrial AI. So um, it's really on how do you apply it? How do you bring this AI topic onto real uh, use in companies? And there it's very often not just the, the cutting edge AI research that you have to do, but uh, in actually to gain understanding uh, gain uh, uh, acceptance also for what is possible and what not. And of course, where we see robots uh, and, and, and uh, humans working 
next to each other quite a lot. Uh, we do a lot in human robot cooperation, collaboration, coexistence, however you want to call it. It's just the humans and the robots share a common workspace. And as the humans are able to, to move uh, in the space, we also uh, try to give uh, the robots that piece of mobility. So mobile manipulation, uh, mobile robot with a manipulator on top uh, that you can send somewhere to fetch something is one of our major uh, topics that we're looking at. And of course, because we're working next to humans, you have to deal with robot safety, robot security. So if you can hack the robot, you might be able to disable the safety system and that's not healthy in terms of having a powerful machine that operates next to humans. And very often robots, ro robotics is actually can be seen as the science or technology of system integration. So it's, it's not just the individual machine that enables productive use of robotic technology. It's actually the integration of robots, manipulators, uh, uh, robot controllers, sensors, uh, actuators, mobility devices, connection to a production system, and then, and then. So it's really this integration that is key uh, to, to uh, provide a, a good working environment. Speaking about the working environment, uh, my lab is actually having half of that building that is seen uh, on, on that screen. It's uh, where we, it was great to develop the Institute also with the building. So we were able to uh, change the focus of uh, uh, the Lakeside Science Park, which has a lot in ICT uh, uh, technology to a building that is able to facilitate real machinery, heavy machinery, high power machinery. Uh, so we have like big, almost industrial hall that is also part of uh, the drone flying hall. So we can actually com combine uh, what the colleagues from the university will uh, introduce later with our lab uh, and fly drones also over industrial production settings. Uh, um, we have, and that's what I mentioned before, an ISO 17025 accredited testing lab. Uh, in fact, we're the only accredited testing lab here in Europe. And we have, because we're doing uh, uh, a research with companies, we have space in the lab that we can close down so that not everybody, not even everybody in the Institute sees what's going on there. And on top of that, we're part of the uh, 5G initiative here in Corinthia. Uh, so we have, in fact, within the lab uh, and 5G environment where we can test 5G industrial settings. So coming back just to, to what we're doing. So our aim is to have robots as power tools for human robot collaboration, for testing new processes in manufacturing where you need sensitivity or dexterity in the gripping uh, uh, and, 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 and things like that. So it's, it's not the standard robot applications that we're focusing, it's really the tricky ones or the, the, the enabling factors of the tricky ones, right? Um, as I mentioned already, um, the robot screwed down on a fixed workplace is only half useful. You can't send him or her or it round, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so what we're working on is really mobile manipulation, having a manipulator on a mobile robot to, for example, fetch things or, or bring things uh, 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 into the inventory or whatever, right? Uh, again, this robot operates next to humans. So it's essential to have sensors, data that actually perceive the environment and you fuse the data. And uh, just to give you an idea, we want to know where are the humans, where are the robots, where are, what's the dynamic environment doing? And, and my colleague actually will, uh, I think, elaborate on that sensor part about, uh, a bit so I don't have to go into much deep uh, uh, detail here. But coming back to this uh, accredited testing lab. So if you want to get a robot out uh, that works next to humans, you have to validate safety. And uh, uh, you have to trust 
your measurements. And that's not trivial. Uh, and that's something that we established in the lab. Uh, so we're working on the one side on the technologies for uh, this uh, uh, human robot collaboration, but we also can validate that it's safe. And we perform also penetration tests to robots. So we assess their cybersecurity. Uh, it's hard to visualize. So uh, it's just, I leave the, the big robot in here because you know when the robot gets weird because it's overtaken by another controller or uh, uh, reduces the safety functional, it might be dangerous for you. So it's very important to bring those two topics together. So if you're interested more uh, on what we're doing, feel free to contact us and I'm happy to answer your questions um, right now. Thanks.